he reads, discipline your children while there is hope. There's a window period for disciplining children. And when that window period is gone, now life takes over. there, Mirella Mack here and welcome to the Proverbs Challenge where we read a chapter a day from the book of Proverbs. Today is day 19 and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Then later on in the video, you'll see that we'll be making comparisons using the Amplified Version because it's just a way in which it translates certain things and gives a broader understanding to the verses. One may ask, what's the purpose of reading a proverb a day? Now the Proverbs are loaded with knowledge, insight, instruction on how to live our lives daily, how to look at situations and how to come out on top of every situation, how to conquer and how to see the traps of the enemy as we move along. You find that as you read the Proverbs every day, there's always an answer for something you're currently facing. And now instead of seeking people and things, you can always seek in the Proverbs and trust me, the Lord is always answering and always speaking. Now, before we begin, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time and this moment. Lord, as we read your word, we ask that it seeps into our hearts and into our minds. May we be able to make comparisons into what you've written for us and how to apply it into our daily lives. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that is watching. May they be blessed, may they be covered, and may you meet them at their point of need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Proverbs chapter 19, the New Living Translation. Better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and a fool. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then they're angry at the Lord. Wealth makes many friends. Poverty drives them all away. A false witness will not go unpunished nor will a liar escape. Many seek favors from a ruler. Everyone is the friend of a person who gives gifts. The relatives of the poor person despise them. How much more will their friends avoid them? Though the poor plead with them, their friends are gone. To acquire wisdom is to love yourself. People who cherish understanding will prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished and a liar will be destroyed. It isn't right for a fool to live in luxury or for a slave to rule over princes. Sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. The king's anger is like a lion's roar, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a calamity to a father. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as a constant dripping. Fathers can give their sons an inheritance of houses and wealth, but only the Lord can give an understanding wife. Lazy people sleep soundly, but idleness leaves them hungry. Keep the commandments and keep your life. Despising them leads to death. If you help the poor, you're lending to the Lord and he will repay you. Discipline your children while there is hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. Hot-tempered people must pay the penalty. If you rescue them once, you'll have to do it again. Get all the advice and instruction you can, so you'll be wise the rest of your life. You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Loyalty makes a person attractive. It's better to be poor than dishonest. Fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. Lazy people take food in their hand, but don't even lift it to their mouth. If you punish a mocker, the simple-minded will learn a lesson. If you correct the wise, they will be all the wiser. Children who mistreat their father or chase away their mother are an embarrassment and a public disgrace. If you stop listening to instruction, my child, you will turn your back on knowledge. A corrupt witness makes a mockery of justice. The mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Punishment is made for mockers and the backs of fools are to be beaten. That's the reading of Proverbs 19 from the New Living Translation. Now let's take a deep dive and see the verses that have jumped out for me. And in the comment section, you can let me know which verse made you question and make you go, hmm, or gave you an answer that you had just been looking for. 
So Proverbs 19 speaks of many areas, just like the Proverbs. From Proverbs 10 going forward, Solomon is making so many highlights. It's like he, he couldn't contain all that was coming out. It wasn't even like in a specific order. It was just talking about things. And the way it's put out is not that it's random, no. But different people are facing different problems. We cannot assume that we're all facing one thing. And these lessons are to be taught from childhood. That's why you hear him saying, my son, my son. These are things we should have been taught. These are things, these are lessons we should be reading and remembering for ourselves and teaching the next generation and so on and so forth. Because we're meant to be getting better with time. Now, if you were raised in a home where this was not taught to you, now you have to teach yourself. There's a lot of undoing, right, that's going to happen. The only way this will seep in is if you're accepting to the truth. It may be contrary to what you know to be truth according to the world, but I do advise, that let's take this in. Let's take the word of God in and test it and see the goodness of the Lord. Okay, so the first verse we're going to be looking at is verse 3. In the New Living Translation, it reads, People ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at the Lord. Verse 3 reads, The foolishness of man undermines his way, ruining whatever he undertakes. Then his heart is resentful and rages against the Lord. For being a fool, he blames the Lord instead of himself. A number of times we blame God for wrong or things not going our way. Yet we wouldn't have asked of him in the first place. We wouldn't have consulted the Lord to begin with. And then we decide to blame him. You decide to go a certain way. That is not of God. You never asked of God. And then you come to ruin and you say, God doesn't love me. God is not like God, just God this, God that. How could God give me so much sorrow? But you ignored the warning signs. You didn't take good counsel. You didn't listen. If you read back into the Proverbs, there's a number of instructions that we're supposed to, to adhere to and to abide by, right? To allow us to enjoy the success of those instructions. However, if we decide to live our own way, as a fool does, where you, you know there's truth out there, you know the word of God exists, but you choose to go your own way. And then when things go wrong, you decide to rage at God. This has been happening for years. Solomon wrote it down. We're not the first. You're not the first. Whenever we want to do our things, our way, without actually checking with the word of God, without seeing what does God say about this, without consulting him, without praying, no fasting, nothing. You're just going your own way. You're just marrying that guy. You're just taking that job. You're just catching that bus. You're just going, you're just going with life, you know? And like the world tells us, do what you want, be free, ask no one. That is the enemy's trap for us not to consult God, not for us to live according to the life preserving rules that God has set out. Now, you have a choice to either lean into God, lean into his teachings and walk by that, or go your own way, be free, YOLO, right? You only live once and you do your own thing and see how that goes. Then verse 19 reads, a man of great anger will bear the penalty for his quick temper and lack of self-control. For if you rescue him and don't let him learn from the consequences of his action, you will only have to rescue him over and over again. Now, there's people who have chosen to be like, I have a quick temper. It is what it is. Here it says a man of great anger will bear the penalty for his quick temper and lack of self-control. If you do not have self-control, there's a penalty coming. There is consequences coming. If you're an angry person, quick to anger, you have what, what, you psh, cash talk, all of that consequences are coming a penalty is coming but now there's people that constantly are rescuing you or you rescue people you're just constantly coming for them they will never learn i feel at times we are blocking people from their growth some people are meant to be left alone out by figure it out and god they will find god for themselves i tell you that is now a sink or swim situation you cannot keep rescuing people who are choosing not to learn. 
They don't want to listen to your advice. They keep running and doing their own things. And then you run out and go fetch them and help them again. It's time for you to say, right, time's up. You're an adult. May life teach you and may you find God in the process. It's a sink or swim. We cannot keep saving people. You are actually stopping them from growing. You're actually blocking them from meeting Jesus themselves. Imagine you being a hindrance because you're trying to act like God. You're trying to be their Jesus. We need to stop trying to be people's Jesus. Yes, be a sign of Christ, but don't be constantly covering and this for their mistakes. When you lie for people, when you lie for someone and, and you keep covering up their mistakes, oh no, they're, oh, they're, they will never learn. They will never learn. They'll think this is life. Worse off if it's your children, your siblings, your loved ones. You keep covering up for them. No, no, no. But you know that they're wrong and you keep covering up. When are they going to learn? When are they going to get better? When are they going to be more like you? When are they going to be able to make right decisions if you're continuously covering up for them and showing them that it's okay to be covered up for? It's time you let people go and let Jesus take care of them. God loves your brother, your sister, your child more than you ever could. Let God cover them. Let God come to their rescue. May they seek God for themselves or else you're making them weak. Now, if ever you're to die, and we will, if you die and this person is still alive and their spine, their God, which was you, is gone, now they're left in the deep end for the first time in years. And they're most likely to drown because you never gave them the opportunity to learn to swim. We need to let people learn. We need to let go and step away from situations. There's a time. Yes, there's grace. One chance, two chances, third chance. You're on your own, boo. You're on your own. It's, it's not dramatic. No, it is helpful. It is necessary. Verse 18 reads, Discipline and teach your son while there is hope. And do not indulge your anger or resentment by imposing inappropriate punishment, nor desire his destruction. Discipline and teach your son while there is hope. As parents, it's one of the hardest things to do. As a mom, as a new mom, there's times when I cannot tell my daughter no. But then I'm, I always remember that if I don't tell her no, when somebody else tells her no, she won't be able to take it well. She'll grow up in her life thinking that everything is a yes. She'll grow up thinking that everything is going to be fine. Mommy will cover me. Mommy said things happen and mommy says I can get this and mommy says that. I'm literally ruining her life. The, the Living Translation reads, discipline your children while there is hope. There's a window period for disciplining children. And when that window period is gone, now life takes over and you cannot do anything. And actually, you will never be able to do anything because they're going to start pointing their fingers back at you. But you said, and you said, and you said, a lot of parents are suffering that. A lot of parents have suffered that. And I think even in Solomon's time, he could see that, oh, they spoiled their child. You didn't discipline when there was still hope. You didn't tell your child no. You didn't take away the phone. You didn't switch off the TV. You didn't turn off the Wi-Fi. You didn't tell them you can't go to that party. No, you're not going on holiday. No, you're not doing this. We didn't discipline our children. In time, there's a time window. You can't be like, oh, no, if I love them, then, you know, they grow up in love and what? There's love and then there's spoiling. There's love and then there's you actually ruining their lives. The end says, otherwise you will ruin their lives. If we don't teach our children discipline, our young ones, those who are around us, who are under us, if we do not teach them discipline, they will not have self-control. Discipline is a way that keeps things in order. Now, if a child has no discipline, they're chaotic. They're now a nonsense member of society and nobody wants to be near them. You're the person who brings disorder and destruction and this and selfishness and all those things. The people that we then don't like because you refused to discipline them. You refused to say, 
You don't want to share? Psh, take it away. We share. What kind? Don't raise your voice. Don't shout. Don't spit. Don't slap. Don't this. Don't that. But if you just go, oh, it's a child. Oh, it's a child. What? They're being raised. The time is getting shorter and shorter. They turn one. They turn two. And this is the end. Three, 19. Go. Done. And by 19, it's, oh my goodness. By 19, you cannot start teaching how to share. There's certain lessons that are actually for a specific window period. Between one and this, it's sharing. Between that and that, it's this. Between this and that, it's there. Now you want to try compact all the lessons when a person is 19. Wake up, Ellie. Why are you lazy? No, no. Now you're shouting. It's too late. When they had the time and when they, when they somewhat worshipped you, if you had taught them to be discipline and waking up on time and all of that there wouldn't be a problem here but guess what now you're trying to crank up a 19 year old a 16 year old to help in the kitchen yet you never taught them that to not talk back but when she was talking back when she was six and seven you were going isn't she clever we're glorifying rudeness hmm? when a child moves around swearing and we giggle oh isn't that funny she said truck <laughs> i'm not gonna say the word but you know what i mean we laugh it's so funny and now you've actually just allowed something to be put in your child and they're never going to let that go we're allowing things to happen as parents as the people guardians in society we find it funny a swearing kid on tiktok will get a million likes versus a child who's preaching the word of god it's funny how our world is set up we will glorify a twerking baby over a child who's worshipping online. Training up a child in the way they should go. No, we don't want to discipline. We want to have fun. Teach them to be free. Pick whatever you want. We are ruining their lives. They will always turn around and say, why didn't you tell me? And you go, I wanted you to be happy. And they'll be like, really? Am I happy now? Let us not withhold discipline. It's uncomfortable, yes, but it is extra necessary because we are raising the future generation. In closing, verse 23, fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. If I said to you, there's a way you can be protected from harm and you have full security, you would be so eager to be like, where? It's the fear of the Lord. We have to learn how to fear God. Now the Holy Spirit is the only way we're going to truly learn how to worship God and how to see him as truly awesome in all his glory. How to respect him and abide by his laws. How to. The Holy Spirit can help us there. Now, you want a life that leads to success. You want protection. You want cover. It starts with the fear and respect of the Lord. This ends the Bible reading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for coming this far. I hope it's been helpful. There are a number of verses I could have gone into, but like I said in the other videos, this will take five years just to read one chapter because there's so much going on and there's so many angles we can look at the word in. But please do take time to get to know the word for yourself, to get it into your heart, to study and to ask of the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? Now I'll catch you tomorrow as we read Proverbs 20. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're, like, we're left with 11 days to the end of Proverbs. Wow, days of wisdom. Thank you so much, Lord. All right, I'll catch you tomorrow. I love you with the love of God. Bye.